Hello, welcome to Postcolonial Space. I'm Masood Raja, and today in my series on academic writing tips, I'll be briefly talking about how to write or think or compose scholarly works that are out of the box, that do something more than what is traditionally expected of you as you write a paper or work on a book chapter. So what do I mean by that? So if you look at an average paper, which you might have written or someone else that you know might have written in literary studies, usually it is, you know, here is my theory and this is the novel and I'm going to read this novel and then discuss with you what it means, what it says, what do female characters do in it? What do male characters do in it? That's the structure of a traditional essay where we go into a text, right, and try to decipher it. And it's there is nothing wrong with it. But this is the kind of essay that everyone writes, pretty much, especially in the early stages of their scholarly work. I think we could add another layer to that kind of work when we go into what the text does outside the narrative that's given to us. What are the implications of a given novel or a text for a reader? So that means we must go into the reader response criticism, but not just from the point of view of here is how a middle-class reader would read it, or here is how a Pakistani reader reads it, but what could the text do to an unsuspecting reader, or for a reader who may not be aware of the implications of certain relationships pointed out in the text? Or what can a text teach us about how to live in the world? Or how to conduct ourselves collectively in, in the world. One thing that I absolutely amazingly learned from my own mentor, Dr. Robin Goodman, and through her work and her teaching, was that she would make us question the underlying assumptions of a text. So you read a novel, right? Midnight's Children, okay, let's say, Salman Rushdie. So instead of just trying to discuss what Rushti has done in it and what kind of history has he played with, we could also look at it and see, okay, what class point of view does it privilege? Does it privilege individual autonomy over collective action? Does it privilege absurd nihilism over some form of political action in which people come together and try to change things? So what that does is, why is it writing outside the box or painting outside the lines is because it does more than what a given paper would try to prove or try to suggest. And I didn't get here by accident, you know, as I read more and more during my career as a student and a scholar, I constantly also questioned my own assumptions. Why am I thinking about a text a certain way? Why am I writing about it a certain way? And then I tried to go and find what other ways of writing about a given text were available, right? I still remember when I read Bruce Robbins' Feeling Global. It's a book on cosmopolitanism, but his engagement with it. In that book, he talks about a certain perspective, a view from above, what he calls, you know, kind of the bombing run view. And he basically what he's suggesting there is that the Eurocentric or European scholars have this view from above and they think it is normal and natural and that's how they view the world. But what he exhorts scholars to do is to question the way they view the world. And I think that's what adds an added layer of sophistication to our work, or will do that for you. So if you are writing a paper, any novel, about any novel or any short story, 
part of your writing should try to engage with your own writing as well. If you're seeing it a certain way, are you questioning it? Why are you seeing it that way? And if you are questioning it, what kind of answers do you have? So I know this is not really a planned step-by-step, -step, point by point talk, but you know, none of my videos are ever like that. It's just basically a live ref reflection in front of this camera. But I would say if you were to think critically about your own positioning, and then in the process of writing, questioned that positioning. And if not questioned or altered it, at least explained it. Why are you writing the way you are? Why do you view the text the way you are? And then if you looked at the text and what's in it, and then went beyond that to see what the text does in the world, what does it teach us? Or what kind of worldview is it shaping imperceptibly? Then your scholarship will be more than just here. I've arrived here and here is the meaning. In quite a few of my published works, I've used this phrase, and I used to use it in classes too, where I used to say a text is not necessarily just a point of arrival, but a point of departure. And people have sometimes asked me, what did I mean by it? And what I basically meant was that we don't just go into the text and stop there and seek meanings. We learn from it. And then we go out in the world, other texts, other modes of thinking. So that's how our text becomes a point of departure, right? So, for example, if I'm reading Midnight's Children, in the first few pages, Rushdi uses the greatest narrator of all times, Shehrzad, right? Or Shehrzade from A Thousand and One Nights. Now, I could just read there as an allusion and a reference and just dwell on it and say, oh my God, like Rushdie knows his 1001 Nights. But when I read it carefully and then I went and reread 1001 Nights, I realized the Shehrzad that he's invoking there is not the Shehrzad of the 1001 Nights. And I actually pointed it out in one of my essays. Now, doing that was arriving at a text, finding something that was intriguing, and then departing it to find out, could there be another way of reading Shehrza? I know it's not really a very convincing example, but keep that in mind. So roughly, if I were to sum it up, Instead of just writing a traditional paper, here is my theory, here is my text, this is what I want to say, which feels good enough, add into it a reflection on why you're approaching it the way you are, why do you think it's important, right? And then, what do you think your reading of text this way would accomplish? And what does the text accomplish in the world? Does it enable a different way of thinking the world? Does it normalize the world in which we live, right? That would then add added layers to your engagement with the text. That's all I have to say. Let me know what you think. If you have any ideas, any suggestions, please post them in the comments and I'll try to address them. Thank you so much. Stay safe. Take care of each other. Be generous. And from me to you, as always, peace and love.